In this lecture, we are going to examine nonverbal cues to deception. Before we do that, let's talk about what we mean by the various terms so we have a common vocabulary for talking about the terms. Nonverbal means any part of the communication message besides the words themselves. They can include the body, the face, the voice, the appearance, or even the environment or situation you're in. I've divided the cues into vocal and visual cues because those are the most studied in the area of deception detection. First, let's talk about the vocal cues. First of all, let's talk about speech hesitations and speech errors. These are the ums and ers and uhs or the mistakes that you make in your speech as you're talking. We also have the pitch of our voice, how high or low the voice is, the speech rate or the speed at which you're talking. There's also a response latency, which is the pause between when one speaker stops and another speaker starts. There's also your pause duration, as you're pausing within your own speech, how long are those pauses? And there's the frequency of the pauses and whether or not the pauses are filled with speech hesitations like ums and uhs. The first visual cue is the gaze, the amount of eye contact between you and the person that you're speaking to. We also can examine how many times you smile. We can examine what are known as self-adapters or illustrator gestures. Self-adapters are when you touch yourself, you play with your hair, you play with certain things, you touch yourself in order to make yourself feel less nervous. Whereas illustrator gestures are the types of gestures like this that go along with your speech. We could examine just the number of movements that you make. Hand and finger movements, leg and foot movements, trunk movements, which is your body. We can examine your head movements, how many times you shift positions, and some people have even examined eye blinks and pupil dilation. Several meta-analyses summarized by Vry in 2008 show that deceivers are more likely to show these 10 things. One, high-pitched voice. Two, a longer latency period between a question and an answer. Three, longer pause durations. Four, shorter answers overall. Five, fewer illustrator gestures. 6. Fewer hand and finger movements. 7. Fewer foot and leg movements. 8. More negative statements. 9. Less immediacy, which is a combination of gaze, proximity, body lean, body and face orientation, and even the verbal language of psychological distance. And 10. They use less plausible answers. Note that not all 10 of these are nonverbal cues, and those that are nonverbal are not very subtle. You should also note that eye gaze aversion is not among the cues at all. Let's examine them a little bit more. For example, number one, two, and three, voice pitch, voice latency, or the latency of your response between the question and the answer, and your pauses are all vocal cues, not visual cues. Those that are visual cues are things like your illustrator gestures, number five, the hand and finger or the leg and foot movements, number six and seven. Those are very subtle and we're usually expecting fidgeting or nervous movements when really the research evidence shows that deceivers don't move very much at all. They become frozen and hardly move as a way to try and not give anything away. Some of the other cues are actually verbal, which we'll discuss in another module. These include how long the answer is, the use of negative statements, and less plausibility. There's also an overall pattern of less immediacy, which we'll discuss later as well, but it basically combines verbal and nonverbal cues to show that they just don't feel as close to the interviewer as people that are telling the truth. Of all the nonverbal cues we have available, people believe 11 of them are related to deception. They're right about just one, the higher pitched voice. People are looking for more fidgeting, eye blinks, less consistent eye gaze, and other unreliable cues. In other words, when it comes to nonverbal cues, people are just looking for the wrong ones. The 10 cues I mentioned are unexpected and tough to spot, so perhaps we really shouldn't be using nonverbal cues much at all. But before we give up on nonverbal cues, let's talk a little bit about facial coding and microexpressions. You might be wondering about microexpressions because they've gotten so much attention. The television show Lie to Me was based on the work of Paul Ekman in this area. He created something called the Facial Affect Coding System, or the FACTS. It examines particular muscle movements of the face using what he called action units, or AUs. 
You have more than one muscle in your face that combine to make an AU, and you can measure the duration, intensity, and even asymmetries in the AUs of the face. A microexpression is a brief involuntary facial expression shown on the face of humans when one is trying to conceal an emotion. Ekman says they normally are about one-fifth of a second, but other researchers have found they're actually much shorter than that, as little as one twenty-fifth of a second, and have questioned whether the human face can even move that fast, or if humans can even recognize signals that are so brief. Certainly in the context of a conversation or an interview, it would be very difficult to watch for them and use them to detect deception on the spot. My suspicion is that it's better to look for the more obvious cues to deception, like inconsistencies in the story or implausibility, rather than trying to look for minute cues that may not even be there. The conclusion I reach from reading the research on nonverbal cues is that there is no Pinocchio's nose. So why is it so difficult to use nonverbal cues? There are a lot of reasons for weak predictors of deception among the nonverbal cues. For one reason, there might be inadequate scoring systems that are not specific enough to really capture the subtle cues that we're looking for. It might be that microexpressions are so fleeting and masked that they're difficult to really detect on the spot. It could also be that really a combination of cues or clusters of cues are more predictive than individual cues by themselves. One question we might have is why does the false belief about eye gaze persist? So many people around the world believe you can tell a liar when they don't look you in the eye. Mann and colleagues asked people in a departure area of an airport to tell a lie or a truth about their upcoming trip. When they used traditional techniques comparing gaze aversion, they found, similar to other researchers, that there were no differences between lies and truths in how much eye contact people made. But when they looked for deliberate eye contact, just a bit longer than expected, they found liars did it more. While most of us are expecting liars to be ashamed and avert their gaze, it's possible that they make deliberate eye contact in order to look more comfortable and credible. Overall, I believe examining nonverbal cues is one of the weakest places to search for clues to deception. Let's explore some other ways to detect deception that might be more reliable.